afternoon, um, right, the monster Freddie Grant um, took us to a location uh, in Elgin where he buried Gabby. At the present time, we're um, at a location that we're trying to recover her body. Um, this has been 357 days of terror that Gabby's mother and family have endured, that this community has endured, and it's not the way that we have liked this to, to end it. We've liked to have found Gabby and brought her home to her mama, but um, we have some closure. Um, it's, it's a sad day, I'll tell you, very sad. Um, probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in 38 years was to go to Gabby's house and talk to Elvia and tell her what we found. Uh, we have not fully recovered everything from the scene. We're processing it as a crime scene at this time. Um, so we can't give exact confirmation, but um, we're pretty confident the fact that he's taken us there, he showed us, he's told us, and some things that we found at the scene. So it's just, I think it's just a matter of time before we yet are able to confirm it. Um, this case has touched every, a lot of people. I've never seen you know, a case quite like this that has just grabbed the community and grab basically a nation. There's been people all over the world, in the United States, that's uh, been interested in this case. Um, you know, Solicitor Dan Johnson and myself has struggled for a long time now since this case first started. This was a case where um, it wasn't a who done it. Almost immediately, we were able to determine that Freddie Grant was the person that was responsible for kidnapping Gabby. Uh, you know, the challenge was was that we hadn't found Gabby. Uh, the solicitor and I have had many conversations. Uh, there, we've been in negotiations for quite some time um, with Freddie's attorneys. Uh, we have stood strong on what our offer was. We made an offer to them, and we haven't changed it. From day one, we haven't. Um, for, there was some requests made that we just could not meet, and we were not going to meet. But at a point that this case took a very important turn was when Freddie's daughter, Dominique, was arrested. Um, that was, I guess, the breaking point as far as to getting Freddie to uh, lead us to where Gabby was at. So he, uh, I don't want anybody to think that he did this out of his conscience and where he felt bad for Gabby or El Elvia or this community. He didn't do that. He did it solely because his daughter had been arrested and she was facing some very serious jail time. That's what we needed. Um, we flew to Kentucky today. We took the state airplane to Kentucky. We picked him up in the federal penitentiary. We brought him back and um, he led us to the location right outside the town of Elgin. Uh, we're currently there now. We'll be there for quite some time. Um, as Dan and I have struggled with this case, um, we, we had to do a lot of soul searching. Um, it was almost that you're making a, de a deal with the devil, and it was, it was tough. Um, but for 20 years, I've watched uh, Dan and Gene Dinwiddie suffer every single day with not knowing. And for the last 357 days, I've seen that same pain and Gabby's mom, Elvia, on her face and her voice every time I spoke to her. And we, we were in, in constant contact with each other. And we both decided that um, it's best for the community, it's best for Elvia, it's best for everybody that we were able to negotiate what we did come up with, which allowed Freddie to take us out there today and show us where he buried her. Can you tell them where that is from? Um, between Elgin and Lugoff. Did Grant give you any indication as to his motive during this or what he did? That's, we're, we're not going to go to any of that. What the most important thing is and what our focus was, and I've said this from day one once we arrested him, was, was to bring Gabby home. And that's what we're doing today. We're bringing her home. We're bringing her home to her mother. And uh, as far as motive or anything like that, we're not, we're not going to discuss that. You but, uh, talked a lot about a deal. Can you tell us what you offered Freddie in exchange for telling him where the body is? No, not at this point, but I will tell you that um, it's what we were able to negotiate was something that we talked about from the very beginning, and we never changed that. 
uh, as far as what we are going to recommend to the court on a time um, that he could be sentenced to, and he's going to be charged with murder. Uh, that's that that was never off the table. That was never anywhere where we even considered anything less than that. Has his demeanor changed at all since you picked him up? Since he made this decision to leave you to Gabby's body? I don't know. Not really. Uh, he's still he's still the same Freddie he's been from from day one. This there's been no change in him, except for we we held strong. We never blinked in this poker game of life that we were playing. We never blinked. And we held a, finally got an ace in the hole, and we played that ace. And it's today, I think we're seeing the results of it by bringing Gabby home. He's what? being tried, charged with murder. Are there any changes in the charges that his daughter Dominique will be facing? We're, we'll discuss that later. At this point, we're not going to talk about that. Has yeah. Dominique helped at all in the recovery or in the? Search? Again, we're not going to discuss that. The, the main thing that we want to put out to people today is that the search for Gabby's over. Um, you know, it's a sad day for, you know, Gabby's mom and family, but also for this community. Um, and th the message tonight is that she is coming home. What was Mrs. Swainson's uh, state of mind when you guys had to? Just imagine. I just, just imagine that you're being told that for 357 days you suffered of not knowing and to have to tell her. You know, now, now we know. You can just, I just, I can't tell you because I think it was too personal for what he and her went through for a period of time this afternoon. Um, but it was, it, it was a sad, it's sad. Um, it's very sad. Can you give us a timeline on when you picked him up in Kentucky and brought him down here and told her? We actually, we left around a little bit after nine o'clock today. Um, the solicitor's office has been working with us to get some paperwork that was necessary. He was in federal custody. We had to get a circuit judge to sign some paperwork for us, work with the uh, federal penitentiary to allow us to pick him up. Um, we wanted to do it as quick as possible, so we used a state jet, state plane. Uh, we had three officers fly, um, left at 9 o'clock. They probably left um, 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Um, to come back. They got back around a quarter till three. Uh, we went straight to from um, Aeronautics Commission to where he led us to, which was in um, outside of Elgin. So probably 4.30ish or so was when he led us to um, the location um, where he said he buried her. Why is he being held in Kentucky? Federal, penitent federal penitentiary. Uh, he was convicted of a federal charge, so he's serving federal time. So that was a penitentiary they sent him to was in Kentucky. The area that he took you to today, has that area been searched before? Many, many times. Many times. And how does that hit you in your gut to know that you've looked in that very area for Gabby before? It kills us. It kills us. It kills us because we failed to find her. Even though we could not have saved her life, uh, when she was buried, it, it hurts all of us uh, to know that you know, many, many people walked that area. Many, many people looked in the exact same place where we found her, but the way she was concealed, you, you wouldn't know. You just you, there's just no way that a human would possibly be able to know that she was buried at that spot, and that's where she was at. How did he conceal it? In fact, uh, the type of hole that he dug and how de deep it was and things that he put over on top of it that were not able to, to just you not be able to see it. Um, a cadaver dog, we don't believe, would have been able to have fi found it due to the depth that it was in. And cadaver dogs searched that area. We searched it on foot, and it's just... We just we just couldn't find it. There was just no way that we've been able to find it without somebody doing what they did today, and that's Freddie Grant taking us to the exact location and saying that's where I buried her. Did she? Did he stay there the entire time you guys? No. There? No. Is he back on a plane to Kentucky? No. He uh, he is currently being housed um, somewhere, and he'll be put in the Richland uh, Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. Sheriff, I know. Um, was this search 
Um, specifically for Gabby, did he mention the Florida woman that had been last seen with him, or was it? This is all, we're only dealing with Gabby at this point. We're dealing strictly with the recovery and bringing Gabby home. Who so. has, would be responsible for the search for Diana Lasker? Is that Richland well, County, or was she Elgin Kershaw? El Elgin Kershaw, and then Richland County be whatever assistance that we can. Um, but at this point, all we're dealing with was, is with Gabby's case. Solicitor, is this a potential death penalty case? Is this no. No. Uh, no, it's not. I mean, under the, you know, obviously I can't speak about the specifics of the negotiation, but no, it would not be. So can we expect to see Freddie Grant in a courtroom again? Yes. So Elvina Definitely. Swainson will have to go through this again? He, she will have to appear in court, and, and, and we will be in a courtroom soon. Do you have a date set? Uh, no, but I'll let you know. It'll be soon, very soon. Was it today that Grant uh, agreed to cooperate with you? We've been in negotiations for a very months. long time. Months. 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 And uh, you know, the sheriff and I have, have talked virtually daily. And uh, it's just been a very long, a long process. You say those negotiations involve his daughter's fate at all? I cannot talk about the specifics of the negotiations, but you will hear about them in the courtroom. Even not touching specifically on the negotiations, is it fair to say that he did what he needed to to save his daughter's life in taking Gabby's wings? I cannot talk about the specifics of any of those negotiations or characterize, you know, what he did or why he did. Just so y'all understand, the solicitor's bound by some things I'm not bound by as a prosecutor. There's certain things that he can't talk about. And, and he, it's not that he doesn't want to tell you, it's just we want to make sure this is done completely legal and there's no loopholes, there's no problem whatsoever. He's standing up here with me because this is something we've worked on together. This was a joint thing. I couldn't do it by myself. He couldn't do it by himself. But together, we've been able to reach the point we're at right now. And like I said earlier, this is a very difficult point for us to reach. You know, we it's, it's, we we struggled. We struggled a lot uh, to get where we're at. But you know, I can't say it's anything successful about it. But the point was that we were going to, I promised uh, LV a long time ago we were going to bring Gabby home, and that's that's what we've done today. Your deputies were on the search site. Can you tell us about any other agencies that are assisting? Uh, we've, from the very beginning, um, we've had the FBI, Solid Assist, does Kershaw County, Elgin. At the scene, we're processing scene, Richland County. Um, the Sheriff's Department in Kershaw County has basically turned it over to us. Uh, the jurisdiction for the case, since she was kidnapped in Richland County, um, carries over so and it's the same judicial circuit so there's no problems there but we're processing the scene and uh, with assistance of you know our people are basically handling it but Kershaw County's there with us also. How large is this area that you guys were searching and are searching now? Right now it's just a grave site so it's very small. Have it's you found anything there to indicate she truly is there? Yes. No, no, but I would not be standing up here if I wasn't confident enough to say that she's there, and I wouldn't have went and talked to Elvia and told her that if I wasn't confident enough. That's one thing I wanted to make sure uh, that you know we didn't put her through any more pain in this community, any more pain. So hopefully, this is a, a chapter in this sad case is now over, and we'll start a new one, and that's that's the healing process. I will tell you, she's very strong woman. Uh, she believes in her faith. She has her pastors with her, and they're going to be with her throughout. Um, and that's what she's relying on to get through this right now. And How's that, the community feel from this? Oh, we got to go on. I mean, that's one thing that we have to know as a community mm -hmm. that you know this, this was a sad case. The community came together. I, I just, just you all know how the community came together on this case. The, the vigils that's been held and everything that's been going on with this, the community really came on. But I, I think now the community's got a little bit of closure because they know she's been found. I think if we had not found her, it would it would linger, and it would just linger. I mean, 
this, even in my house, my little 10-year-old constantly asks about Gabby and Daddy any more new information, and, and other kids do the same thing. So it's, you know, it's impacted little children, it's impacted adults, so it's, um, so, but this, this chapter, she's been found. She's been found, so we have to now be strong. And as I told Elvia, she'll never be by herself. That this community, the Sheriff's Department, is going to be with her from, from now on. And that we'll always have her and we'll always wrap our arms around her. And we, and we need to do that. We cannot, just because it's coming to a close, we can't forget about her. And she's, she's carried something and her memories is always going to be there. And we need to be there with her too. All right. Thank you all.